I had some decent views all day, but this is uh, from the cabin. It's pretty awesome. Sleep is starting to be all weird. I, uh, you know, I think it's because of the river. I'm not a real good sleeper beside like the drone of a river. For no reason at all, I woke up and it was dark. And I couldn't get back to sleep for a while. I tried, 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 tried. And then finally I looked at my phone and it was 4.50 in the morning. And here I am, I'm wide awake. So I was probably up for about an hour and a half. And then for no reason at all, I fell asleep again. Now it's about 20 to 10. It's day nine. I'm getting loopy. Day nine out in the wilderness. So yesterday I realized that this is gonna be a fight physically. Like it went to a new level for me. And now it's starting to be a fight like mentally, emotionally, whatever, right? It's starting to be a battle on a few different fronts now. This is where the real backpack begins. Well, the weather's still on my side. How outstanding is that? Sheesh. Wicked. Well, I might be up against the wall, but oh man, I always gotta readjust, refocus this thing. There you go. But there's no better place to have coffee. Ah, yeah. Well, I'm basically ready to rock and roll. Start worrying about everything, start stressing about everything, thinking about every last detail taking on you know all the rest of the trip in at once in your head just got to go back to basics you know what are the indisputable truths and uh one the next two days my plans aren't changing no matter what so I just deal with that two i have 76 kilometers to get out of here doesn't matter if i change my plans or whatever, there's 76 kilometers to my car. There's 100 if I decide to do my little side trip, right? And three, it's gotta take things one step at a time, one day at a time, one kilometer at a time. Break it right down, right? Ultimately, it is just put the pack on and walk. Stop when you're tired, take a rest. All right, it's the only way I can tackle this, right? Can't take it all on at once. I can't beat it all today. All right, coming into the South Ask Burn. Not right this second, but in a kilometer or two. This is a relief so far. There's about a three kilometer stretch there yesterday before the first crossing of the river. Uh, I put it on camera a little bit where there was so much willow and stuff just reaching out and grabbing and it sucked. <laughs> I was just kind of going, oh man, how much more of the trail is like this? So it's a relief to see that this here anyway is a nice big wide trail. 
Yeah, and just like that, there's the burn. This is what 14 years of new growth looks like. I believe it was a 2006 South S burn. After a while, it's gonna make this trail tougher and tougher to find, right? Because the trees are gonna start invading it. You know, one of the hardest things to see in nature is a tree falling. And I have gone through many forest fire sites. Ironically, one of the first times I ever set out to hike a trail oh, is when I saw a tree fall. That's the one time. It was the Hayburger Trail in Elk Island National Park. It's uh, just east of Edmonton. I don't have any footage because I wasn't, uh, I wasn't doing YouTube back then. I was barely even taking pictures or anything. I did all the trails in that park that year, but I think I've got like 35 seconds of video maybe. But yeah, that was one of my first attempts to do a trail and I saw a tree fall. I have done how many hundreds of kilometers since? I've never seen a tree fall. It is, I've seen, I've had five bear encounters and I've never seen a tree fall. It's crazy. Well, the burn gives you nice views. I mean, if it is through, through dead trees. And Dalhousie still has a bunch of snow up top. But unfortunately the burn also gives you this, it makes the trail a lot more work. So in this case, I've actually, to get over this, I actually dumped my pack. Man, good times. This is actually pretty cool. This tree, like it grew like a spiral and now that it's like burned perfect black, you can see it quite well. It's quite nice actually. Unfortunately, it's <laughs> gonna make me climb up here, Ugh, get around it, but hey, you know, it is quite nice. Okay, I'm making this happen, damn it. Got a dead burned tree. I gave it a couple of shoves. It looks like it's ready to go. Let's do this. Hopefully I don't kill myself being stupid. Come on. There you go. Oh, wow, anticlimactic. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> hey, you know, I stopped a tree from falling across the trail, so. Yay. <laughs> ah, well. Trail is just down there. Decided to climb up here, check out the nice view. Forest fires are funny. All that burnt. You know, most of this, this didn't. A piece back there didn't. A piece there didn't. And yet all this did. It's very odd. <laughs> Forest fires are funny things. Okay, well, this is a bit confusing. I think I figured it out though. So here you have a bit of a, like a tiny bit of a division in the trenches, right? You go along here, you can see a uh, little trail work and there is a bit of a trench keeping going. Okay, like a hundred meters farther down. That trail, this is here, so. Well, I couldn't help myself. I came down here to check it out. There actually is a yellow diamond here, but you get the sense that this is moved. I mean, it's not very wide and look how, like it looks like you would just dump right in there. Looks like it goes down pretty quickly. So even for horses, this sucks. Anyway, <laughs> all right. I got that all marked on my phone and everything as if maybe I'll ever use it, but. It's there. 
Already signs of confusion, but there's some help. So I went down the hiker trail, I did a rock hop. Now here's another rock hop and it's like, okay, where do I go? You look way up here. All right, so there's some help. Okay, now I can actually see a bit of a crappy trail going up. Pretty beat up, but it's there. Well, you can't find a trail anywhere in here, but you can see one up ahead, right? That's just how it's gonna be. I'm gonna lose the trail a lot, and then I'll see it, and then I'll lose it, then I'll see it. You just gotta work your way all the way across all this, right, till get to uh, the boundary markers for the national park. You spend a little time outside of it. Well, that was a climb, but quite the outstanding view up here. Yeah, I'm gonna bring water because I'm pretty exposed and it's pretty hot and I'm not coming down to that water again for who knows how long. Maybe there'll be some little side creeks coming down this thing, who knows. But I'm back in the forest, in the burn, so it's gonna be up and down and climbing over trees. That's gonna be fun. Well, you can keep the trail, but it's not super easy. I have to stop a lot. Something like this helps. You can see down there, there's another one that's cut. So it stands to reason it goes down here. Once in a blue moon, there is a yellow diamond, but most of the time, you know, a lot of times I just stop. Look around, usually I find it in a few seconds, but yeah. It's, uh, you know, like after this little thing and coming down here, and I'm gonna look around again, because I don't see it. All right, cuts off here someplace. In case you hadn't figured it out, it's pretty slow going. Nothing better than climbing a trail and climbing over trees at the same time. <laughs> well, once you finally breach that ridge, like I'm away from the river now, you really can't hard to spot a trail, so you just look around for recent trail work or a little help from the parks. Well, you can't always see the next one. You can barely keep the trail right now, but still those markers are invaluable and I applaud the parks for that one. Yesterday I was bitching them out, today I'm, yeah, I can barely keep the trail, barely, barely. I can see it. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, yeah. I was hoping to keep this on until I saw the next marker, but no such luck. Okay. I'm out of the burn, out of the parks. I feel like one of the toughest parts of my, oh, look at this. Yeah, well, this is the boundary, right? You got a big old cut line, even though it's getting a little overgrown. I feel like one of the toughest parts of my day is definitely over. I know there's more, there's always more, but yeah. All right, got out of there. Kind of on a main seismic line. A little one down here. I think everything's pretty nicely signed on this part. Plus I got pretty specific directions from the, actually both books they basically agree. So let's figure out what this looks like. This whole, this whole part has been well signed. I mean, if you go from uh, Karen Bass to Karen River, you're like, oh my God, what's gonna happen? Like there's a lot of parts there you just gotta figure out on your own. But uh, yeah, this is pretty good. I like that one. All right. Apparently now I'm supposed to turn left one more time. Okay, this is kind of the main seismic road and you can see it's yeah, it's had some activity awesome all right just like the book says come to a seismic line turn left that one you almost see the see it like right away keep going the direction you were going come to another big road like that turn left again this time's a little farther 
But yeah, it's just signs, signs, signs. So here we go. Now the now I gotta find the bridge and pray it's still there. So it's kind of amazing here. You know, a lot of little shortcuts and stuff that tear off this road. I just got off of there for a second by mistake, but just try to stick to the main road. It seems to be what works. I just checked on, uh, that was the hike, Gaia, and uh, it seems I'm on the same track as them, and they found the bridge, so it should work out. Yes, sir. Bridge is still there. Awesome. Oh, and there's the cabin. You can see it quite clearly. Cool. So when that bridge is gone, might be able to get across like here, it kind of breaks off into braids. There it spreads out a bunch. That's for uh, people who are gonna try and do this when this bridge is not here anymore. But it's only a matter of time and no idea what the parks is gonna do at that point. Could take them and they might not replace it at all. They might replace it in five years. Who knows? So here's what the rest of the river looks like. And then you can just battle your way up to the trail from there. It looks pretty old, but I don't see a single broken board. Sure hope so, because I mean, with this pack, I weigh like, what, 230 pounds? Oh, and this is actually the boundary too. Ooh, mama. Kind of cool too with this one. Let's have a real nice look. Even the bolts and everything look fine, like there's no rust. Maybe they've all been replaced. Awesome. I love it. Pretty sure there's a way to store those on my pack without me having to jam them inside, but you know, like through here or something. But I'm not experienced in using it and I do not want a chance having one of these drop. So just jam it in. I can use the hand, use my hands on those. I can still see it bouncing. Bridge restricted to a maximum of six people? Give me a break. Two people aren't going on this thing. That's creepy, man. You have to look down. Look where you're stepping. So you're looking at this water go shooting by. I'm trying to step on the outside parts. You know, because why step in the middle? And like test the board completely right so I'm trying to step on the wires but that's making the whole bridge do this right and I'm stepping on like every second or third one because there's no point testing every the strength of all of them oh all right I'm across Hawaiian Trail Crew 1994 26 years old like, this is quality fantastic work like seriously I wonder if this has been redone like it does look either that or it hasn't aged in 26 years like this is fantastic this is a big reason to come do the South Boundary Trail as soon as possible if you want to do it because when this thing is gone this becomes a trail that you try and do at the end of August you know it's all you can do because you gotta cross this thing We'd have to do it uh, during the lowest water time possible. 1994, 2008. Well, okay then. So it's 12 years old. <laughs> All right. Well, that's kind of cool leaving that sign there, but it's a little, it's a little misleading. Okay. Apparently, getting up to the trail up here is a bit of a pain. 
through the burn again, so start with that. The trail isn't too easy to keep. I lost it and then I went over, did a little rock hop crossing. And then I went over to a spot where it looked easy to bushwhack up and oh, that was the trail. So now I've managed to follow it and they've even found a little bridge, surprisingly. And over 50 things like this, no bridge. So a random bridge is a little interesting. You can see there's a very old flag and an old kind of uh, triangle carved into this tree before it got burned. Keep going up here. Another one, it's full of surprises. Well, I found a little, had the trail all the way up to about there. Then I just had to bush back my way up here. And I found a little something following the very top of this. So hoping that's it. In fact, it looks pretty prominent. So yeah. Okay, I guess here's the trail. I found the horse trail. Here's all the signs. And another very, very, very old one. All right, I thought I left pretty decent uh, video for that, but just in case, especially because there's not a single trace of chainsaw work done down here in the last, I don't know how many years, I'm gonna put the, uh, the way, the configurations, whatever, the coordinates, there we go. I'm gonna put the coordinates for this little sign in the uh, description. Wow, that was well done, wasn't it? Well spoken. Okay. Apparently there's a river ford down here. What I want to do is go to the go to the cabin, which as far as I'm concerned is the river ford. So, oh yeah, and they've cut a nice big road down. Sweet. cabin. My first thought was uh, how on earth did this, just, did this survive the burn? And then I saw how new it looked. It's like, yeah, this didn't survive the burn. This is a new cabin. And I even got like total and utter confirmation. Yep. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is probably uh, a warden's favorite. It's a nice, nice cabin, that's for sure. Why does it look like the, the outhouse survived? <laughs> that the only, why, always, poop always survives. How does that work? Okay, so in the future, I came down that little road here and then came in here, but it keeps going down and there's a horse crossing. And I mean, look how nice and spread out the river is here, right? I mean, I, I might actually be able to do that now. Oh, you can even see there's a green sign down there talking about the burn. But you can see uh, there's the road heading back up, right? So the road you keep going on down there, and as a hiker sign, it points you down to the bridge. So maybe you just keep on going, and then eventually it comes down. And you know what? That's probably going to be how you get across. You know, in the future, when the bridge is gone. Anyway, I had some decent views all day, but this is uh, from the cabin. It's pretty awesome. I like the porch, but they didn't put any chairs out, like none. And uh, it is absolutely howling with horse flies. If I stand over here, I might have one around me, but there is like a dozen. Just loving the porch. I don't know, is there such thing as a, a horse fly nest? I've never heard that before, but maybe there is. Well, I went through the burn there for a bit. There was a bunch of stuff to climb around, but very happy to say that this is what it looks like now. This is 
Got to be some old logging road or something. Anyway, I will take it. All right. Only a nine kilometer day, but I feel like the most technical parts of the day. The uh, trip are done. Sweet. Well, very picturesque spot. I believe this is a tarpian rock, but uh, this is the water source. Kind of a mosquito infested. Yeah, you can see through it though. It is nice and clear, but yeah, this is a 150 million percent treat your water site. Why you don't get too big and uh, yeah, try to make sure I had no floaties. All right. And the bear hang still intact. And looks like they got some beat up old privy sign. I'm not sure. But they got marks on the trees, so I'll go see what this is. Well, that's by far the biggest log I've ever seen. And it's not on two trees, it's on these two things. Interesting. Looks like there's an old one there. I'm wrong. Tarpian rock is... Oh, oh, I think I can just barely see it, actually. That's just part of Mount Dalhousie still. Still haven't hiked it away. Phew. Well, it's day nine in the mountains. On day zero, the first meal I cooked with this thing was uh, supper. So, this thing lasted uh, pretty much a full nine days. Good thing to note. It is a nice picturesque spot, I'll give it that. There's no river going by making that drone, so I can appreciate that after last night. A few days ago I said the only way to really relax in the backcountry is to find a tree to lean on. You know what, a good log also does a, a nice job. The bugs and the mosquitoes, jamming around me it's getting to the point now where I barely I just barely even care you know I, I'll pay attention you know when I want the horse flies to bite me but at this point you know it's day nine it's the end of day nine it's my are just part of life not that I won't be extremely happy to get away from them when I get back home now this thing is surrounded by reeds right so if you could take right from the middle of the lake, it's probably nice and clear, but you can't. It's, uh, you know, there's reeds. And you're trying to, you try to get the bottle in as fast as you can because you don't want to pick up the stuff off the top, but you still end up with something. So the way to do that is to, uh, to fix that, is to have a secondary receptacle, or if you could just use that, and get a coffee filter and pour the water in there. And then you uh, get the floaties out. Do I have a coffee filter? No, I do not. I think I had one for the first while on my backpacking and then it got wet a few times and I said to hell with that, but I should probably add it. I mean, it weighs zero. I guess as you mentioned too, what am I doing without a coffee filter? Well, I'm just doing the best I can. You know, when I go to boil something that's clearly not as clear and wonderful as I'm used to, there's like, something tiny jumping around inside until it gets hot and dies and then I have to try and scoop it out my finger or something. But you know, I just trust this thing. You know, if, I shouldn't have bought it if I didn't trust it, right? It says it removes Jarda. So it's just my own, my own like not wanting to drink nasty little things that, yeah, you know, most of the time it's a great water source, just not here. It has been blazing hot for a while, and I keep thinking it's going to happen, right? Like, look at this thing. That guy, you can see it growing. You can see it reaching. So, I don't know. Maybe it'll finally come to an end. Honestly, the blazing hotness is 
starting. I'm almost at, I'm almost wishing for rain at this point. It has just been so hot. Stupid thoughts you have in the backcountry. Tonight I'm having black bark chili, and even just from licking my spoon, it already tastes good. Last night I had chicken tropicana, or uh, tropicana chicken. So I won't be buying that again. And it just kind of makes you think, you know, who was it who was like eating chicken one day and they were like, you know what, we make this like great, like really great, if it tasted like pineapple. <laughs> like, how bizarre, really. Oh well, I'd put that on my uh, no buy list. Wanna see something you don't see too often? Here is some heavily broken infants. Calluses. Oh, yeah. Oh, aren't I a classic beauty after nine days out here? A full patchy beard, which is, this is as much as I can do. Styled, you know, shampooed, wonderful hair that's so attractive. Oh. I think that's it for today. Another day, nine of them. Another one tomorrow. Good night.